Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. We've got a fun one today, an iron test of kind of our favorite 10 players cavity irons here in 2020, a combination of sort of the best selling ones, uh, the best ones in fittings, uh, and also some newer ones that have been released here in the last couple months. So um, we've got all 10 models here ready to go, ready to test. Thomas, just before we kind of outline all the details of the test, um, can it give us a rundown and maybe what you expect to find out of this test? We have got a range of lofts maybe, a range of models, but what do you think we'll see? Uh, as you mentioned, we have a range of lofts from about 32 degrees to 35 degrees. So with that being said, I'm going to expect there's going to be a range in carry distance, there's going to be a range in ball speed, and a range in spin rate with re these, mm -hmm. re these models. There's also going to be a range in workability as well. Some models are going to be a little bit more workable, workable a little bit sleeker, and some maybe just designed to fly just a little bit straighter and have a little bit more of a level forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's seven manufacturers represented here in our test. So we'll start, um, you know, we got Ping I-210, Callaway, x Forge CB, we got the TaylorMade P770, the Titleist T100, the Mizuno JPX921 Tour, the Shrixon, Z785, the Cobra King Tour, TaylorMade P7MC, the Titleist 620CB, and then finally the Mizuno MP20MMC. We might mix that order up a little bit during the test, but um, Thomas is gonna hit 50 shots here, five with each model, and then what is the golf shaft they'll be using today? Yeah, so we have the KBS S Taper or Money Taper 120S golf shaft. That is the golf shaft I was able to get in every single manufacturer, so we okay. could compare all these different models. And then we're also going to hit with the type this probably one X golf ball. All right, and a couple more reminders before we get started. Uh, number one, please subscribe to our channel. We got a lot more content coming here in the future. Um, of course, all this stuff with TrackMan that we do, uh, we do it to so help you guys out in selecting the clubs and that are best for your game. And number two, we do have some construction going on nearby, so please bear with us there. But uh, Thomas, you ready to get after it here? I am, ready to hit 50 golf shots and see how these all perform. All right, Thomas, it looks like you got the Cobra King Tour first here, uh, with, you know, built with MIM technology, not cast or forged, which is, all these I think are forged pretty much, uh, and that's MIM, which is different. Cobra claims it's gonna be a softer feeling iron than forged. Um, and so that's basically using a bunch of robots to make it as super precise as possible. What is your takeaway on that so far in our testing? So I have, first I really like the look of the clubs. They yeah. do look really solid looking, looking down at. I, I, we did a video recently and I was trying to figure out kind of where they, you know, what they kind of look like and where they kind of fit in. Definitely a little bit more towards the, the player side for sure. Yeah. Um, when we were testing the, uh, TPU insert definitely made the feel feel really soft off the club face with yeah. this club. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's see what it has here. Okay. Okay, Thomas, Cobra King Tour. You know, first impression of those five shots, and then we already talked about kind of the feel and look, but I know that you really liked the look that first time we tested them. I do really like the look of it. It's got a little bit of forgiveness in there still. That fourth shot I hit was just a little bit on the, on the chunky side. I didn't quite catch it. Went five yards shorter than mm -hmm. the other, other four of them, essentially. But it flew on the exact same line. I didn't get yeah. punished or anything like that. So just a tad little bit of forgiveness with regards to the King Tour iron that really, you know, really impressed me actually. Those were really good, good shots. Yeah, I think that's probably the newest model or one of the newest models in this test. Uh, relative, I think it was, you know, October of 2020 uh, is when the Cobra King Tour was released. So, um, you know, Cobra, the irons, they're, they're moving up, moving up for sure. So um, now we can get to, let's see here, why don't we do the Ping I-210. So Thomas, the Ping I-210, it's probably been out the longest or close to the longest of all the models here. Um, I think there's a reason for that. It's because 
Ping hasn't really needed to replace it, right? Uh, it's been, it's currently in my bag. And uh, I know one of the things you like about it is the consistency. Yeah, definitely consistency. We'll notice, yeah, I had a couple of miss sets where I pulled the ball a little to the left and left left face a little open. But you would notice the distance consistency. Yeah. So notice if you're going to draw a line from east to west, so left to right, that the distance was pretty similar regardless. Yep. So that's the important thing is you're getting some great consistency out of the i210. So that has impressed me. Mm -hmm. It's been out for three years now. I haven't heard anything about a new one yet replaced, but I'm sure there's something fairly soon. But there's a reason why it's been out for three years is because right. it's just done so well. Yeah, now one thing to cover, the loft. So the Cobra King Tour and the Ping I-210 7 are both 33 okay. degrees. So that's going to be kind of right in the middle of where you know the 7 irons in this test will be. Uh, we got probably 32 to I think maybe 35. Yep. So that's going to be right in the middle. But you know, I'm not sure what the distance both of them were, but I see the spin rate 57, 57, 185, 184. So pretty similar with regards mm -hmm. to distance between the two of them there as well. So yeah, yep. yep, very comparable there. I think you just had, you know, in terms of the uh, east to west dispersion, you know, might be a little tighter with the Cobra King Tour, but the distance was maybe the edge in terms of consistency there for the I-210 so far. But yep. now we can move on to one, another one of the newer ones here, TaylorMade P770. Okay. One of the things, you know, with the TaylorMade P770 that, you know, viewers may look at that club and think, well, it's not a player's cavity, but it doesn't fit into a player's distance category either because it's 33 degrees of loft, which is the same as the first two models we tested. Yep. And looking at it at a dress, it looks like a player's iron. It's compact, thin top line. So, but you'll see here when I pull up the numbers that there is that distance element, that hollow body shape and that comes into play. And also the sound too. Yeah, the hollow body, the, the speed foam, just gives this club just a little extra juice. Mm -hmm. I said this off camera, I was like, I could hit the shot over and over every single time with this club. And there's a reason why it's always kind of performed really well for me, is yeah. it's just the forgiveness level and ability to hit the ball fairly straight and pretty far. I mean, I think the spin rate lower, the ball speed was higher, even yep. though the loft with the other, with all three models so far, we've hit 33 degrees loft. Yeah, you know, the, the P770, same loft, but you can see the differences right away, ball speed's higher, um, spin rate's lower, carry distance is eight yards further, and total distance is 10, eight to 10 yards further. So, I mean, that's, that's not about loft, that's about the construction of the club. Yeah. So, all right, well now we'll get to something that's not 33 degrees of loft. Okay. We'll do the Shrixon Z785. Okay, sounds good. So hit well. All right, Thomas, the Shrixon Z785. Uh, Shrixon irons always look good. And uh, this one at 32 degrees of loft, I think we saw a little bit kind of of what we would expect there, where the spin dropped a little bit, distance kind of increased, and that I would think that you would attribute that to the loft. Yeah, the loft was causing the spin to be a little bit less compared to the Cobra King Tour mm -hmm. and the Ping I210. Yep. It had to be pretty close to maybe P770. Pretty close, yeah, about pretty close. Difference. Yeah, pr pretty close there as well. Pretty close on the, on the smash factor and, and, and distance with the two of them there as well. Looking down at it, for me, it just gives a lev little more level of forgiveness kind of from like heel to toe. It just looks a little bit wider. Okay. I think it was that first or second shot that I hit was going just a little bit a little bit left. You know, I hit it, I was like, well, it's gonna go far left. It just kind of hung in there. Mm -hmm. But that definitely you know, surprised me with, with yeah. this. But, very good looking golf club. It's done really well. I know they're going to be coming out with something exciting soon to follow up yeah. and it's going to be hard to beat these. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's get into Mizuno now. We'll do the JPX 921 Tour. Okay.
So, Thomas, the uh, JPX 921 Tour, 34 degrees of loft, so just a little bit um, extra loft compared to the ones so far, the other, other models we've tested so far. And I know one thing we always note from Xeno Irons is that lie angle is a tad flatter uh, in, the stand, in their standard uh, orientation. Yep. And it seemed like there was a couple there that sort of were hung out to the right. Um, but what did you think about that? Also compare the kind of the look and feel to the other models so far. Yeah, with the exception of the last shot, shot five that I drew a little bit, everything else seemed like just stayed straight or just a little bit to the mm -hmm. right side. One thing I will talk about with this club is a little bit higher spin consistency. Mm -hmm. I think mean, the last shot spun at 59. I think the highest I had was 61. Yep. So I think on average it was around about 6,000 RPMs yep. there. But you take a look at that consistency number there. So it was under 100 with regards to consistency. So that's what impressed me. If you're looking for a club that's going to spin maybe just a little bit more, that is attributed to the loft difference a little bit there too. Yeah. It, this is a definitely a great option. So if you're looking for a little bit more spin and stopping power and workability, great option. Yeah, this was very consistent for you. That spin number stayed right around 6,000 with each swing. Uh, and then I wanted to look over too at uh, just the curve. Uh, and it was kind of the least amount of curve to the left anyway. They've all been, you've all had that, that baby draw for most of the shots. So on average, everything's curving left. But, yep. um, you know, even with all that said, the dispersion circle is among the smallest so far. So um, anyway, now we can get to, we'll go back to, we'll go to Callaway here, the x Forge CB. Okay. Thomas, the Callaway X Forge CB, new here in 2020. Um, it's got a very soft feel to it, and it's got that weight plate in the back that, uh, for swing weighting purposes, that uh, maybe golfers don't love the look of. Uh, we've gotten some comments from viewers about that, but at a dress, you can't notice it, and you don't. And the feel, of course, you don't notice anything either. Besides, just soft and buttery. Yeah, it is soft and buttery. The feel is incredible. You know, the original. 18 x 4s also felt pretty soft as well, and this is a great option to follow up with that. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I'll t talk about with this, this weight back here is, you, yes, you can't see it at a dress. It's only, you're only going to see it when it's maybe sitting in, sitting in your bag or yeah. sitting on the shelf. You don't ever see it. Just think of it as a way that's going to help your game improve. Yeah. It's just it's going to make it easier for Callaway to get the swing weight dialed in for you. Yep. Yeah. And then also want to mention the spin on that one briefly. A um, little bit lower. So it's a 33 degrees of loft, which was the same as, I believe, the first three models we tested, right? Uh, Ping I-210 was at 57. Um, Tim, or, uh, K Cobra King Tour, also 57. The P770 was lower spin, and then this one, 55. So that's lower than those first couple at 33 degrees. So uh, maybe a little, little bit lower spinning the X-Forge CB compared to others of the same loft. Yeah, it's a, it's a closer competitor to P770. Maybe not quite going quite as far, but it, it's close. It's definitely mm -hmm. close. Well, now we can move on. We've got two uh, models yet in the list uh, to do here. So we'll start with T100. Okay, sounds good. So, Thomas, Titleist T100 um, from the T-Series from Titleist, which I believe was the fall of 2019 is when that was released. Um, what do you think about that? Does it have a, you know, comparison, comparing the look and feel to maybe the, some, some of the previous models? What do you think about that? And then we'll kind of look briefly at these numbers here. Yeah, I mean, Titleist traditionally has always had a very good looking iron to look, look down at. Just, it just looks clean. It mm -hmm. just looks very, very clean shiny, clean golf club. That's yeah. what, what I'd say about the T100 and, and other models by Titleist as well. They always, just the, the edges and the shaping are just very, very good. Um, speaking on numbers, I was a little surprised by the spin. I mentioned to you, I was like, normally I've seen in the past, like AP2 has spun a little bit higher in, in, the, in the past. 
So expecting it to maybe spin 59, 6,000 RPMs. Yeah. It was just a little bit less. It was about 5,700 on average. Wasn't a low spinner by all means, or, but it was kind of, kind of right in the middle with regards to mm -hmm. spin with this iron. Yeah, I mean, it is at 34 degrees of loft, so that is part of the reason maybe you would expect it to go up. Uh, but it did stay kind of down then, as you said, you, you know, kind of would expect uh, from the T100 here. And uh, I probably didn't help that cause by having four over there to the left as well. We're forgetting right. the door and, and the ball. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. now your tendency is to draw it. So that's, yeah. you know, that's kind of how every club's going. But, um, you know, four out of the five of yours drew left of the center line. You had to kind of one out to the right. So, yep. um, all right, now we can get into, we'll do the TaylorMade P7MC here. Okay. Still spun a lot though. <laughs> it did. So Thomas, I <laughs> noticed you didn't love that last shot there. Uh, but I think so for me. I'm, I, first of all, the dispersion circle for you know for the way you didn't like that last shot. Uh, the, the circle's pretty small here, and the spin seemed to be very consistent. So you know, despite maybe the direction of the shot sometimes, <laughs> but. This, we might have a new spin king here is what I'm saying. Yeah, that was definitely me react reacting to a pretty bad swing. But you mentioned spin king. The spin consistency on this, yeah. higher spin, right around about 6,000 RPMs. Yeah. But that plus or minus 39, considering it was drawing quite significantly yeah. on those five shots there, that really surprised me of how high mm -hmm. the spin was on this here as well. Yeah. One thing I do also want to touch on is the look, looking down at this club. I know Tigers liked those those irons that have got those grooves really very close together nike yeah. kind of had those irons in, in the past this looks like a kind of like a hybrid between you know for example the 770 and like tiger woods's yeah. blade that he plays the, the grooves a little bit closer okay. together so i just kind of noticed that looking down at it you could see smaller grooves so okay like, interesting yeah. Hmm. Yeah. i didn't notice that part with the p7mc but it definitely would make sense right yep. um 34 degrees aloft here so even with the higher spin it shouldn't I mean, compared to the rest of the models, you wouldn't think it'd jump up that high, um, but it did here. So now we can get to the Mizuno MP20 MMC. Sounds good. Thomas, that was the Mizuno MP20 MMC. I mean, classic Mizuno feel. I don't know if we have to cover that too much because we say the same thing every time we hit Mizuno irons. They feel extremely soft and buttery. <laughs> How about the look of it? And then we'll talk a little bit about the performance there as well. So after hitting the P7 MC, I noticed two things. First thing I noticed is the club looked a little bit shallower. Okay. So it looked like it was more kind of like heel to toe with regards to size and not as much depth from the from the top to the bottom there too. Okay. And I had to count the total amount of grooves a couple of times here just to kind of make make sure. So there's like 12 grooves all the way up with the yeah. MP20 MMC when there was 14 grooves with the P7 uh, MC there too. So that was kind of interesting there looking at that. But yeah, looking down at it, you know, definitely looks a little bit a little bit flatter. I'm looking at where I'm hitting it on the club, and I can see I got a little bit more wear slightly towards the, the toe side there as well. Yeah. I think I did leave a couple there to the to the right, with the exception of one that was I was able to turn over. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 32 degrees of loft, so we should expect a little bit lower spin, and it kind of, that's kind of what happened at 55, well, 5600-ish uh, RPM of spin there. So, uh, but now we got just the one model left. Okay. Uh, that's a lot of golf shots, Thomas, but we got the Titleist 620 CB. All right, let's do it. Little hit. 
All right, Thomas. First, I wanted to ask you, uh, I know you hit the T100 a few clubs ago, but I wanted to see if you have a thought on the look and feel of the T100 compared to the 620 CV, because they're essentially two irons um, that are in the same category, I would think. Yeah, it's a combination of a little bit of a thinner top line, smaller sole, okay. and then the level of forgiveness definitely dropped with yeah. the, the CB. Now we're reaching what, 48, 49, 50 golf swings here in my last <laughs> three swings. Yeah. For the last couple I got a little bit heavy. I was still swinging the same speed with regards to club speed, but the level of forgiveness with this iron, not quite the same mm -hmm. as a couple of the other models. The loft on this also is about 35 degrees of loft on it, yep. so it's the highest lofted cavity back iron that we tested today. Yeah, so that, that spin and that, um, you know, the height should be higher with higher loft and then and the same on the flip side of the coin, that should be the shortest probably down the fairway here. Uh, so, I mean, this, that map looks a little confusing probably to the viewers with all those circles and multiple colors on, you know, on their, or colors on there twice, but the shortest one here is the CB, so the highest loft um, ended up being the shortest, and you mentioned the forgiveness, a couple of those maybe didn't quite catch it perfect, and you could see the difference in the distance there. Uh, essentially 10 yards knocked off by kind of barely miss hitting it there, which didn't quite happen, it would appear, in, in the other clubs yep. there. So um, now what we can do is I can give you the control of the track man uh, here, the track man data, and then we'll kind of discuss this further, see what we learned from this test. Okay, sounds good. All right, Thomas, you got the data there. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of shots here uh, to break down and a lot of data points. So we'll probably try to keep it a little bit more concise than we usually will break this down. But what are the major findings from the test here? Yeah, so my club speed ranged from 88.3 to 89.3 miles an hour with every single club. So this is gonna be a great comparison between every single model. Mm -hmm. I think for us, what we'll try and do is we'll do maybe like a, a top three per category and just explain the differences between these clubs here. Okay. So let's first start with ball speed. So the highest ball speed of all the models was the TaylorMade P770 at 130.9. That club has the that club has 33 degrees of loft on it. Yep. So it wasn't the strongest loft club. The Strixon Z785 and the Mizuno MP20. Those two were. Mm -hmm. 32 degrees of loft on them, and they were fairly high ball speed as well. Mizuno was 128.5, and the, yeah. um, sorry. Strixon was The Strixon was 129.5, so they're still fairly high, but the P790 definitely kind of outperformed with regards to ball speed. At the other end of the category, we had the 620 CB that had the least amount of ball speed and that was the highest lofted club. Yep. So generally seemed general trends with the exception of the TaylorMade P770, which is definitely yeah. a, a exclusive club with yeah. that speed foam. And That's about the, just, the yeah. construction of the club there. The hollow body, it's, it's got the P790 DNA, yep. but just in a smaller compact shape that resembles a player's iron. Yeah. So this touch on smash factor, 620 CB, 141 was the lowest with regards to efficiency. Now, I'm not saying that was bad efficiency or anything like that, it was just the lowest. Right. And then Strixon Z785 and the Taylor P770 were 147, and then you got Callaway X Forged CB at 146. So, with regards to efficiency, those were the three highest with regards okay. to efficiency. Um, spin rate, we definitely noticed trends. Yeah. The more loft on the club in general, the, the higher the spin rate. So the tight, the 620 CB also was, had the highest spin rate. I do think there was some uh, exceptions to that though. There was a few of them where we kind of thought based on loft, one would spin higher or lower. And there were a couple that didn't quite follow that trend. Yeah, we definitely noticed that, um, you know, Taylor made P770, you got 33 degrees yeah. of loft on it. it. You know, it was the lowest, I believe it was the lowest spinning of them all. Yeah. Where they had two here that had 32 degrees of loft. MP20 MMC 55, basically 5600 RPMs. And then we also had the Strix on Z785 with 5400 RPMs. Mm -hmm. So once again, the TaylorMade P770 always, it, it excites me because it's, it's, it's a good good club with regards to where if we're trying to pick up some distance on a little more of a player's club look yeah. there as well. I want to touch on spin consistency because that's important because we want to have a nice consistent result every single time. The TaylorMade P7MC 
Wow, that is quite impressive. Plus yeah. or minus 39. And it was spinning a little bit higher and it was drawing a little bit as well. So interesting that the fact that it spun a decent amount even though it was drawing. Mm -hmm. The JPX 921 Tour also was fairly high spin and fairly uh, low consistency of plus or minus under 100. And then the Titan the 620 CB was also plus or minus 91. So those yeah. three with regards to spin consistency definitely stood out to me there as well. Let's move over here. I'm gonna skip launch angle. I'm gonna expect the launch angle. It's gonna range plus I mean, or minus. I mean, that should yeah. kind of correlate with the loft a It'll little bit It'll correlate more. with the loft. So let's look at carry distance. That's more important than total. So the lowest carry distance was the club that had the highest amount of loft. Uh, 620 CB, 176.4 on average. And then the highest carry distance was the TaylorMade P770 mm -hmm. at 193.2. And some close comparisons, the Strix on Z785, 190.2, and the Callaway x Forge CB, 189.8 with regards to carry distance. So those were your three highest with yeah. regards to carry distance there. Um, let's move over here to curve, because that's important. There were a couple that were had single digit curve numbers. The Zeno MP20 MMC only had seven feet of curve to the left. And the Mizuno JPX 921 Tour had eight feet of curve to the left. Those were the only two that were in single digit. Every club curved to the left. Yeah. But what's interesting is that had those two had the least amount of curve to the left. Mm -hmm. And I would touched on Lion Goal yeah. a bit in the past. That, that's definitely related to the, the club. That, the reason behind that is because the Mizuno irons in general have yeah. flatter a line. A little bit flatter line angle, which kind of promotes yep. an open club face a little bit. But. Yep. Um, 37 feet of curve to the left with the TaylorMade P7MC. And that's, that's notable because the spin was over 6,000. It was one. definitely notable. So. And the interesting thing was too, the east to west dispersion as well. So that's that, that pink circle over here on the left. It was consistent. So. Mm -hmm. it was, that, that impressed me with regards to consistency level there as well. Um, height, we're talking 100, no, all of them are really plus or minus yeah. five <laughs> to six yards. 108 was the lowest height. That was the Callaway X Forge CB. That one flew the lowest. Um, and then 116 was the highest with the tightest T100. So we're talking pretty similar with regards mm -hmm. to height differences between all, all, all the models there as well. And then landing angle, that's also gonna correlate as well with yeah. regards to height there as well. So finally, dispersion. So this is, the, this is the, the, the big one. I know I'm the one that's hitting the shot, so it can be different for every single yeah. player. But this is just a good comparison of me testing these clubs out and seeing kind of what stands out the most. Yeah. So let's first start on the smaller circle. So we got the small white circle in the middle, the Cobra King Tour. So that's the newest model out that we've yep. been able to test. Very, very impressive. impressive. So mm -hmm. nice forgiveness, playability. That circle is smack right in the middle there. So that stands that, out to uh, me there as well. That says something too, because they're, they're, they're talking about this MIM construction process as being you know, precise. That's the word they're using, Cobra is. And, that's pretty darn precise right there. So that maybe says something about this MIM construction. Maybe we'll see that a little bit more throughout the industry uh, based on the success so far of the King Tour irons. Yeah, they definitely are onto something there. Uh, if we look at kind of north to south, so carry distance with regards to consistency, we've got the uh, TaylorMade P7MC. So that's that pink yeah. circle here. Very, very consistent every single time. Looking at other trends here to see if there's anything that stands out. Callaway X Forge, fairly similar with regards to the consistency there as well. Mm -hmm. A little bit lower bull flight, but definitely consistent there. Um, larger circles, we can see there's a couple that I've got a little bit more east to west. Uh, that was the Titus T100, that's that, that red circle. We've got the uh, other white circle, the Mizuno MP20 MMC. Now this, that's user error. That's not so much just the club that's gonna yeah. cause that. But we're looking at general trends. And then you can see distance. So the TaylorMade P770, no doubt that purple circle carried the furthest. Mm -hmm. Not only did it carry the furthest, it wasn't the largest circle either. So it was, it was pretty solid with regards to consistency. Yeah. I'm seeing here there's four purple circles that were pretty close together and then one over there to the left. But that definitely stands out to me there as well. So 
This is a this is a great comparison between ten <laughs> cavity back players iron models that I've seen perform really well in the fitting bay mm -hmm. and what I've seen in, in testing here over the last few months. So really great comparison. Yeah, there's a lot to take away from this and you know it kind of depends on you know it always depends on what the player needs or wants, right? But um, clearly there's kind of a distance orientation with the P770, right? That's going to be, you know, while it does have 33 degrees of loft, that's for distance. Like, you want more distance on your irons, P770 uh, is the one for you. And, of course, a lot of these will also give you that consistency that you want. If it's spin consistency, if it's distance consistency, they all provide that. So, um, the golfer is interested out there in any of these models, of course. Second Swing is the place to stop in and talk with someone like Thomas or any of our experts, and we'll get you set up with a new iron set like one of these 10 models here. So Thomas, thanks for hitting, it was 50 golf shots and breaking it all down for us.